But I think with a committee like this, I've been very surprised over the last couple of days. Accusations suddenly levelled at Sir Bernard Jenkin, one of the Conservatives on the committee. Today, MPs, including Nadine Dorry, suggesting you know, that we should be asking questions about what those Conservative MPs have been promised, maybe mm. even suggestions that they're undermining somehow Boris Johnson at the bequest of, uh, at the behest of number 10. I mean, those kinds of accusations are very, very damaging for politics going forward. And I think, look, as you say, a lot of these arguments have already been rehearsed in public over the last couple of months. You know, the, what Boris Johnson was told by his advisers, for example, what kind of events these were... But for me, the thing that really stands out about reading this report is the tone of it. There is real depth of anger in it, but there's also a very careful determination to make sure that every single rebuttal point that they believed was going to be put to them, and, and there will be many and there have already been, that they could have covered themselves on in, in those particular terms. And I think, you know, some of the things that are most most interesting about it are not the back and forth about which advisers said what when, what did Boris Johnson, you know, say to the House of Commons, but the the feeling that the committee gets overall about his evidence. You know, there's a suggestion that Boris Johnson is conveniently flexible with his interpretation of the rules on mm. gatherings. There's a particularly interesting section in around page 60 of the report, which deals with whether or not the report could have determined that it was intentional for him to mislead and it concludes that they can because it says somebody who is repeatedly reckless and continues to deny that which is patent is a person whose conduct is sufficient to demonstrate intent. Yes. This committee, it feels to me, had had looked at all of these things, all of these particular events and formed opinions on them. But when Boris Johnson released that thousand word statement at the end of last week, when he chose to release his response to the committee before the committee's report was out... I think that took things up a level. I assume it's one of the many things about this which really hits you between the eyes, Kate, isn't it? That if uh, if Boris Johnson dug himself in deeper, he dug himself in so much deeper, not for the for the first time. He was the author of his own downfall. The the committee started this in, this inquiry into the question of whether or not Boris Johnson misled or de deliberately misled the House of Commons. By the time they'd finished. The charge sheet was about three times longer. Yeah, and they actually even conclude that his actions after the report was sent to him, the fact that he released his thoughts on it, the fact that he he essentially drew, you know, the committee into this dispute about whether it was fair or not, that that in itself was a contempt, that it mm. was a very serious breach of the rules because actually the information was provided only for Boris Johnson and his legal team. And there's a whole section of this report at the very end of it which deals with those actions. And it and it talks about how it's damaging for democracy for the committee to be accused of being biased. Yes. Now, look, you know, whether we like it or not, in politics there are always accusations that one side is unfair to the other. We're very used to those. But I think with a committee like this, I've been very surprised over the last couple of days, accusations suddenly levelled at Sir Bernard Jenkin, one of the Conservatives on the committee. Today, MPs, including Nadine Dorries, suggesting you know, that we should be asking questions about what those Conservative MPs have been promised, maybe mm. even suggestions that they're undermining somehow Boris Johnson at the bequest of, uh, at behest of number 10. I mean, those kinds of accusations are very, very damaging for politics going forward, for the Conservative Party as a whole. And, you know, I think some of the, some of the phrases that stand out here, you know, the committee found that they were surprised at the frequency with which Boris Johnson closed his mind to the facts. In fact, they say he deliberately closed his mind to the facts. And I think, you know, for a lot of people listening to this, they will say, well, yeah, we thought that. But let's not forget, this is a former prime minister accused of misleading the House of Commons on five occasions and being disingenuous deliberately on two of them. It's a very, very serious report indeed. If you enjoyed that, what should people do? Well, the best thing would be if you could listen to us on Times Radio, Monday to Thursday, three till five, Jane and Fee.